Hi again, I want to talk to you today about how God supplies our needs. Now the reason I'm addressing this is that I see a lot of people who are in need right now. And of course, I don't personally have the supply to supply their needs, but God does. God has all the supply. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The silver and the gold are his. He has the ability to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God does not supply our needs according to man's riches on earth. He supplies our needs according to his riches in glory. Now, if you look at Philippians chapter 4, it tells us in verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So this verse tells us a lot about how God supplies our needs. First of all, it tells us, my God shall supply all your need. He does, it doesn't say he'll supply some of it. It says God shall supply all your need so the first thing to realize about how God supplies your needs is that God shall supply all your need, not some of it, all of it. If that's not true, then throw out Philippians 4.19 because it says, my God shall supply all your need. Paul is talking to the Philippians here. And he just got through saying in verse 18, I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, a sweet odor, a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. But notice he says that I have all and abound. Now, was this true because of the gift that was sent by the Philippian church? No. If that's true, why does it say in verse 19, my God shall supply? My God. It doesn't say that the, the church in Philippi will supply my needs according to their riches on earth. It says, my God shall supply all your need. He's talking to the Philippians and he's saying that the same way God supplies his needs, God supplies their needs. My God shall supply all your need, all of it. Not some of it, all of it. And how does he do it? According to his riches in glory. Now, is this according to people's riches on earth? No, it's according to his riches in glory. Now, I've heard people say, well, yeah, but God doesn't counterfeit money, so he does it through people. Okay, yes, God does it through people, that's true, and God doesn't counterfeit money, that's true. But I want you to notice something. God supplies your needs. He's not talking about money here. Money is a, a means to supply your needs. Money's not the only way to supply your needs. It's a means to supply needs. But God shall supply all your need, the need itself. Not the He doesn't say he'll supply money. He says he shall supply all your need. What do you need? You need food, clothing, shelter. You need your basic needs met. And God is the one who shall supply all your need. He supplies it. And how does he supply it? According to his riches and glory. And he does it by Christ Jesus. Let's look at Matthew chapter 14. And we'll start at verse 14. Jesus went forth and he saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them and healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place. Send the multitude away that they may go into villages and buy themselves food, buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said to them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat, give them food. The disciples were talking about using money, buying food, buying it. Let, send them into the villages so they can buy their own food according to their riches on earth. And But Jesus said they need not depart. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking into heaven, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets. In other words, there was more remaining at the end than there was at the beginning. They started off with five loaves and two fish. They ended up with 12 baskets full of leftovers. That's a lot more than the five loaves and two fishes they started off with. 
So hold on a second. How were these people's needs met? Was it, were they, their needs met according to the money of the people? No. The disciples first mentioned, let them go into the villages and buy using money, buy their needs. And Jesus said to them, no, they need not depart. They don't need to go buy their own food. And here God shows us an example how God supplies your needs. He didn't give them money. He didn't rain money down out of heaven for them to go buy their food. No, he gave them the food. See, he commanded the multitude to sit on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fishes, and he basically supplied the needs of the entire multitude, a multitude, a great multitude of people out of nothing. Because notice it started off with five loaves and two fishes and they ended up with 12 baskets full of leftovers. There was more leftover at the end than there was at the beginning. So even if you put the one loaf in each basket and one and put the two fishes in one basket, that's that's only six baskets. There were 12 baskets full of fragments that remained. So there was twice as much left over probably more than twice as much left over than there was at the beginning. So God supplied all these people's needs. He didn't give them money to go buy their food. And that's that's a mindset we have in the world today is that you got to have money to get your needs met. No, God went straight for the need. He went, he supplied the need. What was their need? To eat. So God supplied the need according to his riches and glory. Obviously, this was not supplied by the five loaves and the two fish. The five loaves and the two fish were a point of contact. They were something that the people could see. So they could see that there was food. They could see that there were loaves and fishes. And so God, he multiplied the loaves and fishes to the point where there was twice as much left over at the end than there was at the beginning. The point here is God is the one who supplied all of it because there was twice as much left over at the end. All of it was supplied by God. God supplied all the people's needs, this great multitude. And notice it says in verse 21, they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. So if you add the women and children in there, there's at least seven or 8,000, maybe more than that, that were fed by these five loaves and two fishes. And there was twice as much left over than there was at the beginning. So God supplied all the needs of these people. He didn't give them money. He didn't rain down money out of heaven. No, he gave them what they needed. God supplies your needs according to his riches and glory. So if you look at Philippians chapter 4, again, and verse 19, you see here, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. It doesn't mean God will supply money. It means he will supply everything you need. He will do it according to his riches and glory. It wasn't according to the loaves and fish that he supplied those people because there was twice as much left over at the end than there was at the beginning. So we know none of that, the loaves and fish were needed. The loaves and fish were just a point of contact. They were, there was something to start with so that the people could see there was something there. It was a point of contact. But God didn't need those loaves and fishes to feed the people. He didn't need it because there was twice as much left over at the end than there was at the beginning. So God supplied all their needs and their need was to eat. Food was what was needed. God supplied their need of being able to eat and he did it according to his riches and glory. He did not do it according to man's riches on earth. God did not supply according to fishes that were caught by men according to bread that was made by men, according to money that was earned by men and their being able to purchase it. No, that's not what God supplied. God supplied all their needs according to his riches and glory. And he went straight to the source of the need. What was the need? Food. He gave them food. They didn't need money. Money is a means. Money is one means by which supply can be brought to you. But God supplies the actual need. The money is a means. God is another means. God supplies just like money will supply your needs. Money will supply your needs. You can buy things with money. But God is the other sorcerer. He says he shall supply all your need. In other words, outside of money. If God gives you uh, an ability in something, 
that ability, that talent he gave you, yes, that'll give you money that will supply your need. Yes, it will. But whether you had that job or not, this is true. God shall supply all your need, which was food, shelter, clothing. Those are basic needs. God shall supply those according to his riches, not according to money, but according to his riches and glory. And then the last part of this verse is the most important part. By Christ Jesus. God supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, when we saw that when the loaves and fish were multiplied by Jesus, he's the one who did it. It was by Christ Jesus that those needs were supplied. And then that's just a very obvious showing of this principle. But this principle here in Philippians 4.19 is explained to us in several places in the Bible where this by Christ Jesus comes into play for all of us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, it says in verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. How does God supply our needs according to his riches and glory? By Christ Jesus. Verse 9, But you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Now, a person who is rich has all their needs met and then some. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is that though he was rich, now Judas stole from Jesus' money bag knowing no one would even realize it. In other words, there's so much money in there that there was no reason to even worry about people recognizing that there was money taken from it because Jesus never used his money bag. He had a money bag that Judas stole from and that money bag was never used. If you look at every time that Jesus ever met a need, he never went to his money bag. That money bag, he didn't say to his disciples, okay, go get some money out of the money bag and let's go supply that need. No, he supplied the need. He healed the person who needed healing. He supplied food for the people that needed food. He supplied for people without using his money bag. So here we see that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is that though he was rich, we know he was rich, when he died on the cross, they cast lots for his undergarment because it was so valuable. Jesus had all his needs met throughout his entire ministry and then some. He was always, he always had plenty. Jesus never went without. If you look at his ministry, Jesus never went without anything. He always had more than enough for him as his disciples. Some people will say, oh, yeah, it's because he had a money bag. Well, the Bible never, ever, ever shows him going to his money bag. The money bag's only mentioned in regard to Judas, who stole from it. In other words, Judas was depending on money. He wasn't depending on Jesus. Even when Jesus paid the two drachma tax for him and Peter, he had him go catch a fish. And the first fish he caught had a four drachma coin in it that paid the tax. In other words, he didn't go to his money bag. He never went to his money bag. Jesus was rich in every way. He had extra. He had that money bag full of money he never used. He was rich because he had all his needs met, plus he always had extra. So we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Jesus was rich, yet for your sakes, for whose sake? For your sake, he became poor. Now, how did Jesus become poor? When he went to the cross, he had nothing. The money bag he had even, Judas was the keeper of the money bag. And he's the one who betrayed Jesus. So Jesus didn't have his money bag anymore even when he went to the cross. He didn't have his clothes. He was naked when he went to the cross. He had nothing. He was completely poor when he went to the cross. Jesus had nothing when he went to the cross. It's the only time in his whole ministry that he was poor. So we can see that the only time Jesus was poor was when he went to the cross. So you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, we see throughout his ministry, he was rich. He was rich throughout his entire ministry. Yet for your sakes, he became poor. That has to be talking about the cross because that's the only time Jesus was ever poor was when he went to the cross. So for your sakes, he became poor that you through his poverty might be rich. Now, what is being rich? Being rich is having all your needs met and extra, having more than enough. And it's through his poverty that you are made rich. It's through his poverty that you through his poverty might be made rich. Now we know what he did at the cross. He did for the whole world. 
Jesus became poor. We know the only place he became poor at is the cross. And what he did at the cross, he did for the whole world. If we look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, it says, And he is propitiation for our sins. Jesus is the propitiation for, for Christian sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world world. See, Jesus took the sins of the whole world. It doesn't do the world any good unless they believe in him, but he took the sins of the whole world so whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life, like John 3, 16 says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Who did God reconcile to himself? God reconciled through Christ. He reconciled the world unto himself not counting their trespasses against them. Why is that? Because Jesus took the sins of the whole world. We just read that in 1 John 2, 2. He was not imputing their trespasses against them. So God was reconciling the whole world to himself. He took the sins of the whole world. Jesus Christ took the sins of the whole world. So when we go back to chapter 8 of 2 Corinthians, and we look at verse 9, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that the only place he ever became poor was at the cross, and what he did at the cross he did for the whole world, that you through his poverty might be rich. So in other words, everyone in the world can be made rich, have all their needs met, and then some, through his poverty. And how did his poverty come? For your sakes he became poor. That only happened at the cross. That's the only place where Jesus was ever made poor. We see this again in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That's the cross. Jesus hung on the cross. Jesus took the curse by hanging on the cross. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. And as I've pointed out many times before, the curse of the law includes poverty. If we look at Deuteronomy 28, and we look at the curse of the law, starting at verse 15. It says, But if it, it shall come to pass that if you shall not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe all his commandments to do his statutes that I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon you. This is the curse of the law, his commandments and statutes. If you don't observe them, this curse, these curses shall come upon you. This is the curse of the law. And what happens if you don't obey God's commandments under the old covenant? This is what we're redeemed from. This curse is what we're redeemed from. Cursed shall you be in the city, cursed in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your store. That's your provision. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your land, the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep. Well, that's your, your supply. That's all your supplies that give you food. The fruit of their body, the fruit of their land, the increase of your kind and the flocks and their sheep. The curse of the law includes all your needs not being met. And it goes on and on throughout this whole curse, all the way through verse 68. It just goes on and on with this curse that includes all manner of sickness and disease and all manner of poverty in every way in which you can get poverty. By plagues, by your enemies. Your enemies shall distress you in all, at all your gates. In verse 66, your life shall hang in doubt before you. Your very life will be in doubt. And you shall fear day and night and shall have none assurance of life. That means you don't have your needs met. So Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 is basically telling us that Christ has redeemed us from all the poverty that came from the curse. He redeemed us from the curse of the law, which includes poverty, not having your needs met. Christ redeemed us from that. How did he do it? By hanging on the tree, at the cross. So once again, if we look at Philippians chapter 4, and verse 19, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Christ became poor so you through his poverty might become rich. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. We saw the example of Jesus feeding the, the 5,000 men, and we know as many more than that, including women and children, by five loaves and two fish. And having twice as much left over as there was in the beginning. In other words, all the needs were supplied by God. All of it was supplied by God. None of it was supplied by the original five loaves and two fish. The five loaves and two fish, there was twice as much left over at the end. 
So those didn't supply any of the needs. God supplied all the need of those 5,000 people. But God supplies all your need, the actual need, according to his riches in glory, not his riches on earth, according to his riches in glory. In other words, those loaves and fish were multiplied into food that wasn't there. Those, uh, the loaves and fish that fed those people were not the original five loaves and fish because there was more left over at the end than there was at the beginning. So this was all created by God. This was his riches and glory that was used to feed these people. You can call it multiplying the five loaves and the two fish. Yes, he did multiply it, but that was just a point of contact. The people needed to see something, that there was something there to begin with, including the disciples. They needed to see that there was something there to begin with. They had to have something to start distributing to the people. But God supplied all their needs. He supplied all the needs of those people, and he did it according to his riches and glory, all of it, all their needs. None of it was supplied by the original five loaves and two fish. Those five loaves and two fish, there was twice as much left over at the end. So that was not what supplied their needs. It was God's riches and glory that supplied the people's needs, and it was by Christ Jesus. That's just as true for us today as it was for the disciples and for the people that lived during Jesus' ministry. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, which includes all manner of poverty, sickness, and disease. Christ became poor at the cross so that we might become rich. We might have all our needs met and more. Having your needs met and more is what makes you rich. God supplies all your need according to his riches in glory, not on earth, in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, you'll see a lot of ministers giving, taking offerings and saying, you know, if you don't give to us, we're going to go bankrupt. That's not really trusting God, is it? Because it's according to the Bible, he shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. It doesn't say he shall supply all your needs according to your congregation's money on earth. It doesn't say that. He shall supply all your need, all of it, not some of it, all of it, according to his riches in glory, not according to people's riches on earth. And the perfect example is the feeding of the 5,000 by the five loaves and two fish. The only reason there was five loaves and two fish to begin with was so people could see something so that their faith could be triggered. They had to see something in order to believe that there was something there to feed them. But none of that was ever used. It wasn't needed. God didn't need any of that. He didn't need the five loaves and the two fish to feed the people because there was twice as much left over at the end. In other words, it was created out of nothing by God. It was according to his riches in glory, and it was by Christ Jesus. That's just as true for us today. If you're looking to people to supply your needs, then you're ignoring this verse. If you're thinking people are, gonna, are the ones who supply your needs, then you're ignoring God. You're not trusting God then, you're trusting people. The truth of the matter is you have a promise from God. He says he shall. It doesn't say he might. Does it say God might supply all your need? No, it says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory, not according to people's riches on earth, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We see so many examples of this in the Bible. In the Old Testament, we see the manna coming down out of heaven. That manna was not made by man. That manna was from God's riches and glory. That supplied the people food in the desert for 40 years. That was God's supply according to his riches in glory. He supplied all the Israelites' needs according to his riches in glory. And I've heard people say, well, you know, God supplied these Philippians' needs because they gave to Paul's ministry. I've heard people say that. If that's true, then 2 Corinthians 8-9 is false. Because 2 Corinthians 8-9 tells us that you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor at the cross, that you might, through his poverty, might be made rich, that you might have what you need and more than what you need. Be rich through his poverty. How did Jesus become poor? For your sakes he became poor. The only place he was ever made poor was at the cross. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us, believers, from the curse of the law, if you give to someone's ministry. Is that what it says? Does it say that Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law if you give to someone's ministry? It doesn't say that, does it? It says he was, he's redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. In other words, not dependent on you. 
He was made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. He did this for us. This is substitutionary. You don't get redeemed from the curse of the law by giving to someone's ministry. You are already redeemed from the curse of the law. You don't get redeemed from the curse of the law by doing good works. You don't get redeemed from the curse of the law by any means other than what Christ already did. He became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. God supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus because it's through Christ's work at the cross. If God didn't supply your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, if he didn't do that, if he didn't redeem you from the curse of the law, if he didn't do that by his work, then throw out your Bible. If he only redeemed you if you give to a ministry throughout your Bible, then it's not true. The Bible's not true then. If you're going to tell me Philippians 4.19 is only true because the Philippian believers gave to Paul's ministry, if that's true, the Bible's not true. Either you believe the Bible or you don't. The Bible says he became poor so that we through his poverty might become rich, and it was by him hanging on the cross. It was That's how he redeemed us from the curse of the law, is by hanging on the cross. We had nothing to do with it. Your good works are as filthy rags. Your giving to a ministry is not going to supply your needs. God supplies your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The principle is still true. Give and it shall be given to you. Yes, that's a true principle. God loves a cheerful giver. Giving is a great thing, but that's not how your needs are met. Your needs are supplied according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Once again, if that's not true, throw out your Bible. So if you have a need... Remember, it's not based on your giving that you, re- you receive the provision that you need. It's not through your giving. It's not through your doing something. It's through you trusting God. It's you believing what he did for you. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. You're supposed to ask the Father in Jesus' name, according to Jesus. Jesus said, wherever you ask the Father in my name. So Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. He didn't say, ask and you shall receive if you gave enough. It doesn't say, ask and you shall receive if you did enough good works. It doesn't say that. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be complete. Why is that true? Because Christ already redeemed us from the curse of the law. He already did it. That was done by him becoming poor at the cross. Jesus became poor at the cross so that we might be made rich, have all our needs met and then some, have more than enough. So that's my message for today. Thanks for watching.